pray. They can't even call upon God. Somehow, there have been a satanic injection upon their spiritual mind. And they have lost contact with God. And so the enemy sometimes sets traps on our way so that they can paralyze us spiritually. As long as you are strong in the spirit, as long as your spirit is fortified, there is no challenges that you can ever meet in life that you cannot surmount. Come failure, come defeat, come all kinds of problems in life, while well, everyone around you will be troubled and disturbed. I guess somebody some time ago, we did an exam, and many of us failed that exam. And everybody was weeping and going around. They came to me and said, well, any exam that everybody fails is not a good exam. And I wasn't worried. And they told me, well, I said, something in me cannot be crushed. Now, the Bible says a broken spirit who can bear. Who will allow a man to bear his infirmity? What is will bear his infirmity? His spirit. It is your spirit that will give you the power and capability to bear your infirmities. Regardless of how much those infirmities are, the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, economic downturn, the failure of an exam, the difficulty, but as long as your spirit is intact, you can bear your infirmity and stand strong. And so the enemy is not going to target you in the external. The enemy is going to target you in your inner man. He's going to allow you to lose your private victory so that then you cannot lose your public victory. So the enemy sets trap. In a sense also, I think the enemy sets traps to pervert our ways. You see a child of God who has had good ways with the Lord, who has been serving the Lord in good way of thinking and doing things, the enemy sets certain traps and makes situations in your life and your ways become perverted. Somebody who is used to giving and giving and giving suddenly believes that there is no need giving again. I want to live a selfish life. Simply because he has fallen into the trap to think that selfishness is the best way of life. Not knowing that the enemy knows what was ahead of him in terms of the glory of his faithfulness. The enemy just sets the trap to throw him off. Sometimes the enemy perverts our ways that we don't maintain our righteous stand. We are not able to serve the Lord with purity of heart, with cleanliness, with spiritual stability and stamina of strength. In a sense also, I think the enemy decides to put a snare because he wants to destroy our own precious life. You have only one opportunity to be alive on this earth. Life has no duplicate. We have only one life. The scripture made it very clear to us that it is appointed unto man once to die. In a sense, except for a very few people, and very, very few people, the statistic is almost 0 0.0001, who will be resurrected from the dead when they die. By the time we all die, it's final. But the Bible says that the Lord does not desire in the death of the righteous. Our body is the house which God has given us to fulfill our destiny here on this earth. It is, the, it, is, it is our uniform of existence. It is our, what do you call it, what our container that God has given to our spirit to be able to perform. We are spirit beings that have a soul and dwell in a body. But our spirit being our souls, we can't do anything except there is a body to carry it out. Even when Jesus came into the world, the Bible says, a, a body has thou prepared for me. Now, Jesus had a, a calling. Jesus had something that God wanted him to do. But God had to prepare a body for Jesus. And this body was prepared in such a way that it could stand only 33 years. After 33 years, the body had to give way. I don't know how long God has prepared our body. Call it genetic call it immune system, call it whatsoever. I don't know how long God has prepared this body of ours to live here on this earth, to fulfill what he has given us in our spirit and in our soul. But one thing the enemy does is to make sure that this body does not function properly. Is to make sure that this body does not fulfill his rule. And so he sets a snare. He sets a trap. 
and you see a young man who dies at a very young age may of a very terrible disease that he ought not to have died of or somebody who is caught up in the midst of his ages at the time he should not be caught up he has a message he has a calling but for him to fulfill that calling he was caught up and let me tell you Jesus made it very clear to us that the enemy comes but to kill but to steal and then to destroy the book of Revelation tells us that the enemy seems to have the key of Hades and the key of death. But thanks be God that at the resurrection, Jesus took those keys from him. But he will still pose with that ability to take us off and make sure we die before our time. I think sometimes the enemy sets a trap because he wants to put a pit on our path. That is a biblical word. And David said it that sometimes the enemy puts a pit on his path. Can I, can I look at paths? Your pathway is where you are going. What is a pit on your path? A situation that delays you. A situation that depresses you. A situation that does not make you achieve your, fulf your fulfilled goal. A situation that keeps you stagnant. And sometimes the enemy puts a snare and puts a pit there. And rather than moving forward, you are right there where you are. In a sense, I want to say very clearly that the ultimate goal of the enemy to trap us and put all these things in our path is to pull us down for a position of serenity. Is to pull us down from a position of security. Is to push us down from a position of stability is to push us down from our spiritual position in the highest places. And you and I must not be aware that this is the hands of the enemy trying to pull me down, trying to take away my precious life, trying to pervert my ways, trying to paralyze me spiritually, and then to confront the enemy in the spirit and stop fighting in the physical. To realize that wars are won on your knees and not with your mouth. To realize that tears are only effective, it is unto God and not unto your own. To realize that you can, through God, pull down stronghold and subject principalities to obedience at the mention of the name of Jesus. And so one of the first things you must realize is that when you are tormented and destroyed and and getting involved by Prince Paris and Paris, be ready to wage the war in the spirit. Never allow the enemy put you in a position where you cannot fight back spiritually. You must be ready to talk back to the devil. You must be ready to speak out the language of faith. You must be ready to speak authoritatively to the enemy and tell the enemy, get your hands off my destiny. Get your hands off my plan. Get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my progress. You see, this is a spiritual battle. When you say you are a child of God, you never take any steps except God is upon you. The only way one can do the works of God, the only way one can do what God has given us to do in this world is to tap in on spiritual strength is to tap in on something higher than you. Is to tap in on something that is greater than yourself. And I said this cannot happen until you are humble enough to realize that you cannot do it on your own. Until you are ready to fail rather than succeed in the flesh. Until you are ready to be in obscurity and wait on God rather than being in prominence and have the ovations of men. Until you are ready to be downtrodden by situations as long as you are underneath the blood. Rather than to be going out in the, in the, in, what do you call it, in the parade where everybody praises you all in the pomp and pageantry of the human flesh. That statement that without me you can do nothing makes you completely dependent on God. That makes prayer not just a necessity, but a living, a, a, a consistency of life. Just as breathing oxygen keeps our lungs and our body on, 
So prayer is the oxygen of the human spirit. Prayer is the oxygen of the human soul. Just as you cannot do without breathing for some few minutes without your dying, so you cannot do as a Christian without praying all your life. If I Paul put it this way, pray without ceasing. As a young Christian, I thought that praying without ceasing was an impossibility. But I now know that prayer with us is not so much the opening of our mouth to pray, but the disposition of our spirit to consistently cry unto God and say, God, I can only do it with you. There can be no question I will be asked. Whether it's a little child asking me, my little son asking me, Daddy, why do you think this will happen? Or I come into a, an exam room and a board asks me a question that I will not inside me tell the Lord, Give me the right wisdom to answer this question. God, I am totally incapacitated to answer my little son, Daniel. I can't give him the right answer. I have been made to believe through the circumstances of my own little life that for anything good to happen, it has to happen when the good God himself empowers it. And so what I want to say is this. Because the enemy puts a snare upon our life, it makes you and I to begin to wage battles in the spirit. It makes you and I to be constantly at spiritual, to be spiritually alert. That's what Paul told the, uh, 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 Paul said, he says, or, or what do you call it, David says, he says, be steadfast, be unmovable. For your adversary, the enemy, moves about seeking whom he may devour. Whom steadfast resists. The second thing I want to put us to us is that if we are going to deal with the snare of the enemy, we must not take the path of the wicked. The Bible clearly outlines in Scripture there is a path of the wicked and there is the path of the righteous. I can tell you both from my own mistakes and from my own successes both from the mistakes of other Christians and their own successes, that the path of the wicked ultimately leads to destruction. For example, the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. And if somebody says, well, I'm going to get married to the man, he attends my church, I'm going to get married to the, that person, he's a very good man, but that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever. He's not talking of a, somebody who attends your church. He's not talking of somebody who prays. He's talking of, does this person have a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Does this person, is this person in relationship with Christ? Now let me tell you very clearly and very sincerely. If a man knows God and is in relationship with Christ, he can easily be managed spiritually. No matter how much he has fallen, no matter how many mistakes he has made, but if a man does not know God and he's supposedly good, he is still under the management of the devil. Now that you have listened to this message, let me tell you one message in a man's life may be the turning point. It was a message of Abraham Lincoln that brought deliverance to the people of America during the slave trade. It was a message of Martin Luther King that liberated the black people of America. This message is meant to liberate you and turn you around. Let me tell you, God has planned great things for your life. Use the impetus you gain from this message and start to live a new life. I want you to be a partner with me as we communicate God's word to people of all generations. By being a partner, you support me spiritually and financially. And I stand with you to pray that God will reach out to your life. Can you bow your heads wherever you're with me as I pray that God will continually fill you with his divine favor? Father, I thank you for my viewers and those who have listened to this message. Lord, let your hands of mercy be upon them. You will never be ashamed in Jesus' name. The Lord's hands will be upon you. Wherever you put your hands to do, you will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord will stand with you. The Lord will continually guarantee you of his presence. You will not be afraid you will not be ashamed. You will rise up from wherever you are to greater heights, and you will be a seed for your generation, a rare gem in your time. 
Every weapon of the enemy against you will bind in the name of Jesus. I pray you receive divine favor, goodness, and mercy all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house and the presence of the Lord all your life. I ask this in Jesus' name. God bless you.